Okay, we're going to go today trying to create our own AI chatbot. Strictly speaking, it's not actually AI, but it works the same way. What we'll do is we'll create a data set. Now, in the case of ChatGBT, that's got about one trillion lines of data. In the case of the one we're making, we might have more like three or four, or if you put a bit more effort into it, you might get a slightly bigger one. And what should happen is when it's finished, we've got, in this case, a chickbot. And if we ask it a question, so I could say to Mike, what is the capital of Paris, of uh, France, and it knows it's Paris. But if I ask you the question it doesn't know, who is typing now, then it asks what the answer should be. So I'm going to say, Mr. Dyson, and it adds it into its data set. So it's now got four responses. And again, we can now say, who is typing now, and it now knows that I'm the person typing. And this continues to develop. And you can see what we've got here. We've got a series of forever loops. We've got a question that's being asked, and it's checking for um, the answer. We've then got a list of questions, so it looks for the prompt locations to see if it's got an answer to that within its list. And then the bottom section of this is what happens if it doesn't know the answer. What it does is it adds the answer into the prompts list. So we're going to have a go at trying to create this today and I'll talk you through this as we go through. Okay, to make our chatbot, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of Scratch. I'm not going to create a new one, so I'm just going to use one of the ones that exists. So I'm going to go to choose a sprite, I'm going to search for the sprite, I want mine to be a chick bot, so I'm going to go down or search for uh, chicken. I could use a hen or a rooster, so I'm going to use a chick. I also want a background that's appropriate for my uh, chick bot, so I'm going to go down to the background. And again, I'm going to search for a background here. And there's a nice farm background that I used before. There we go. And I'm going to put my chick just inside the hen house there. So this is a background, and we can do a few bits of coding with this to make the chick stay there if we want. So one of the things we could do is we could say on the event when it starts, we want the motion to go to this specific position. And that way, if I accidentally move the chicken, and I press the green start, it goes back to the right place. But that's got nothing to do with creating the chatbot. What we next need is a forever loop. So we're gonna go into the control and we're going to add a forever loop so that it's constantly going on. And then within our forever loop, we want to start by asking a question. But before we do that, we want to introduce ourselves. So my chick bot is called Shelly. You can choose your own. So I'm going to say, hi there. My name is Shelly. I'm your AI chick bot my spelling mistakes there and then we want to ask a question so we're going to go into sensing I'm going to ask and it says here what's your name but we don't want to do that we want to ask a more general questions so we could say say something or ask me a question and then it's going to wait for a response now we've got to do a little bit of programming to start to set a few bits up so one of the things we're going to do here is we're going to go into the variables I'm going to create a variable called found. This is for when it finds something. And then we're going to create a second variable, which is called prompt location. And what we then want to do is we want to set both of those for a starting position. So we're going to set, set found to false, so it hasn't found the information. And we're going to set the prompt location, so we can pull set found again across and change that to prompt location. I'm going to put it into one, so it's the first location in the response. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to search through a list of questions to see if we have the answer to that question. We haven't actually got a list of questions yet, but we'll deal with that later. So we're going to go back into control. I'm going to go to repeat. I'm using the repeat 10 one here, but we're going to change that. We're going to change repeat 10 to length of prompts, but in order to do that, 
we're actually going to need to have a list called prompts. Now, a list is, like it sounds, a, a, a list of information. In the case of ChatGPT, this would be where it's pulling its data from. In the case of ours, this is also where it's going to pull its data from. And at the moment, you can see we've got a length of zero because there's no information in this uh, in this prompt list. And what we can now do is from here, we can say, set the length of prompts. There we go. And put it in there. So depending on how many pieces of information are in our prompt list depends on how often it will repeat so until it's gone all the way through. Then we want an if and else control block. So we're going to go into if and else, this one. Okay. And what we want to do now is we want to look at the answers that come. So we want to say if, and we go to the operators, and we're looking for contains. We don't want Apple contains A. What we want is from the sensing, we want if the answer contains, and we can go back into the variables, and we want to find item from the prompts, but we want to look specifically to the right place in the prompt list. So we're going to go to prompt location, which should be here. So if the answer contains the item from the prompt location of the prompts, then what we want to do is we want to try and see if the actual answer is there. So if that doesn't work, we want another if. And we want to see what happens if it doesn't work this time. So we're going to go back into the operators and we want to find a not. There we go. So if not, then again we want to see if it contains, so we're looking for a contains one, so Apple contains A again, but we're not using Apple or A. We're going to go back to the variables and we're going to say that the prompts contains, and we want to go back to sensing, and we want to find answer. So if the answer contains the item that we're looking for, then it produces something. But if not, then the prompt contains the answer. And what we want to do is we want to look for that response. So we're going to go to add. And we're going to add that answer in. So add the answer to the prompt. So that should add it to this prompt list. And then we're also going to go to add. And this time we need a new list because we want to add it to the responses, not just the questions. So we're going to go to make a list and we're going to call this responses. So this time we can add it to responses. And what we want to do is we want to add the item of responses. And we want the one from the same location. So we're going to go back to prompt location. This means that if it's in number one on the list here, it'll line up with number one on the list there. So the questions don't get confused. Okay, I'm shrinking these down just to make it tidier because when the chicken speaks later or when the chick speaks, its text will come over here and if these are in the way, they'll sit in front of it and you won't be able to see them. You can also, later if you don't like them, right click on them and okay, go change the size or just basically get them to hide as well. Okay. Now once we've done this bit, what we want to do is we want to go into this gap between the two and we want to set found to true because in this case we've now added something in. So we're going to go back to set. There we go. I'm going to set it to true. And we're going to say something. So we're going to go back into the looks. We pull a standard say. You want the one that says two seconds or it stays on the screen and we don't want that. So we're going to go to back into the variables. We want item and again this has got to match the same location so like on all the other ones we want prompt location 
but we're not doing this from prompts, we want this from responses. And if that doesn't work, then what we want to do is we want to move to the next one down. So what we would do is we go to change prompt location by one. And now we need to add the bit that teaches it how to add in the next bit of information. So outside of this, we're gonna need another if block. So go back into control. I'm gonna say, if it doesn't find the right thing, so we want a, an equals. And we're going to go back into the variable. So if what it found was false, then we need to ask some questions. So we're going to go to variables again, and we're going to go to add, and go back to sensing and the response that we've got. So add the answer to prompt. And now we want to ask the questions. So we want to say, staying in sensing, ask. Basically, you've asked a question, it didn't know the answer you want to know what the answer should be. So you could say something like this. So sorry, watching my punctuation again. I don't know how to answer that. What should I say the next time I am asked that question? So this is where it's going to learn. And now we need to add the answer to that as well. So we need to go back into the variables and we're gonna to go to add, and we'll go back to sensing and the answer from this one. We're gonna to add to the responses. And that's basically finished, but it seems a bit unfair if we've asked it a question that we don't respond with something. So we're gonna go back to looks and we're gonna go back to say, and again, we use the two second one. And I'm going to say, thank you for teaching me something new. Okay, and then we should be able to try it. So if we go to run, hi there, my name's Shelley. I'm your AI chatbot. Say something or ask me a question. So I could say, how tall am I? Sorry, I don't know, you can see the problem here, it's still overlapping, so we can do the same thing in the corner and we can shrink that down. And you can see already, it's asked me, I've asked one question, so it's added that to its prompts list. So I don't know how to answer that. What should I say the next time I'm asked that question? So I'm gonna say, um, you are 188 centimeters. And that now adds that into the responses, so I can ask the same question when it comes around. So it says, hi there, I'm Shelley. Say something or ask me a question, so I could say, how tall am I? You're 188 centimeters. What's interesting is if you try doing the same question, but spell it differently. So if you do something like this, so how tall am I? I put a question mark on the first time, I haven't done this time. So it won't see it as the same prompt or the same question. So I'll have to teach it again. So you're 188 centimeters. So it's now got two prompts and two responses. And the more we teach it, the more it will give different responses. So I could say, what is your favorite color? Again, it doesn't know that, but we can teach the chick. So the chick's yellow, it's living in what looks like a mostly yellow farm. So let's say yellow. Okay, and we can continue. And the more we teach it, the more those lists will grow. And you'll see that the prompt list is now at three, the responses are at three. We've just pulled the response from prompt location three, which is why it's showing there. So if we went back to one of the previous questions, we'd say something like, how tall am I? You'll see it's pulling the answer from prompt location one because that's the first in the list. So this is quite interesting because you can see how the lists are developing. You can see how both the list for the prompts and the responses are developing. But you can see how the chick bot is starting to get smarter. It's starting to be able to respond to more questions. And this is basically the same thing that ChatGBT or any of the other AI um, programs do. It's just they've got a significantly larger data set than it's presently programmed into our chick bot.
but play around, see if you can teach it a few things and maybe see if you can get it to answer some questions that we come up with at school.